Well, getting time to get this guy back up and running. And we're gonna take it over to the little garage and uh, give it some TLC. Get this disconnected and uh, we'll leave it here and do all our maintenance close by to the tools. All right, let's get at her. One thing I love about the LX is these adjustable links. Makes taking the three point attachments off and on much easier still not quick hitch quick but definitely better than uh, the bx little turnbuckles so anyway we'll get this uh, taken off okay quick hint for taking off three point attachments. If you look at that hole, you can see that the pin is up against the front. So if you expand or extend the link, it evens out. And then the pin comes out, just like that. Pins out of the swing link. That gives you almost all the play you need. Push off it comes. Give it a push. Off it comes. Just like that. Okay. Hey folks. Welcome back to the key. Mark here. Yep. Getting to be that time of the season where we need the chipper. So we're going to uh, Check the blades and if necessary flip them over they haven't been flipped yet and we'll also set the anvil angle where the anvil is the piece that comes up against the blade and makes it so it cuts properly so anyway no fancy diagrams right now but uh, we'll see what we can find maybe in the manual so we're gonna get to her a uh, 24 millimeter socket or wrench to take off the main clamshell bolt and then it just comes up like this nice and pretty so ooh, not so nice and pretty in there though all right oh, it's a little bit stiff now the blades are sharp even if it's not turning so if you have a cut resistant gloves or something like that probably not a bad idea but i gotta Figure out why this is not turning nicely. Too much, too much stuff. I think, yes, you know, bound up. First things first, I guess we get rid of the stuff binding it up. Well, we'll uh, see if we can get this stuff to come out with the leather, man. Otherwise, I'm going to go find some more tools. Okay, this is what happens when you don't put your tools away properly. We got to fix them before you can use them. This year, we're, the chipper's a little more valuable to us because uh, the fire ban. Uh, we've been in a fire ban here in Northern Ontario, up here in Greenstone for over a month now. And when you're trying to clean areas out, brush and stuff, and lots of stuff to take care of. A lot of times we just burn it, but they don't feel like paying that fine. They don't feel like being the guy to start the fire that burnt down your neighbor's place. So we will gladly use the chipper. Kind of therapeutic too, anyway. So this is a WC-46 from Woodland Mills. Uh, you've seen it in other videos. 
We did a big build video a while ago. And uh, I'll put a link to that yep. here somewhere over there. there. Macarena, uh, somewhere. Anyways, I uh, got this when I had the BX and the BX more than easily powered this. Um, it's eating a lot of wood. Hardwoods, softwoods, uh, hedges. Hardest material we put through it so far was that uh, Carragana hedge from over at our friend Jamie's place there in Long Lack. We uh, built them a new fence, so we cut all the wood on the Woodland Mills HM122 and then uh, cleaned the area out for the fence and put uh, all that material that was cleaned out had to be tripped up. So we uh, took the BX back to Long Lack and ate, uh, oh, chewed on. Tamarack, or not Tamarack, sorry, um, Carragana and Popper, just Alder and that kind of thing. Holy smoky. Okay, this isn't easy. Um, have any suggestions on how to, other than making sure that this doesn't happen in the first place, and clean this out easier, let me know. Note yourself, don't do this again. Huh. Note to self. Okay. Safety note. Safety note. So I just skinned my knuckle in my hand. So you look at the blade, you know, it's exposed here, but also on the back side. <laughs> the now really sharp side um, is exposed as well. So have an eye and uh, be careful because it'll very quickly become a blood, sweat, and tears event if you are reckless like I am sometimes. There's two grease fittings on the bearings. On the top, it supports the main wheel, the chipper wheel, I guess. I think there might be other grease fittings. I gotta look up the manual, but those are the two I found so far. Give them some love. It'll uh, pay back in dividends in the life of your machine. It's a six millimeter uh, Allen key. It goes in there, supposedly. Once you get all the debris out of the way. And a 17 mil. Uh, socket on the back. Now Woodland Mills wants you to you take the nuts off the back of these bolts to replace the nuts to make sure that their locking quality is good and that you don't end up with problems with blades coming loose. I'm thinking that would be a bad thing having blades coming loose. Okay, I've got those cleaned out. Now you could use an impact on these, I'm sure, if you so chose. I'm going to do it arm strong. Maybe. We're trying to loosen Allen keys. If you can loosen the nut versus the bolt, loosen the nut. And it's likely to strip the Allen key out. Now, this wheel turns at 540 RPM. It's a direct connection to the PTO. There's no reference saying that you have to witness each blade to the spot on the wheel. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip them 
and move to the next one. And um, I went to see if I could get some of these nuts earlier today. And locally, we got folks that got metric bolts, but not the narrow or the low profile nuts. So, what I've done is I've added a little bit of blue Loctite, which is not what Woodland Mills says you're supposed to do. But I've added a little bit of blue Loctite to the nut. You can see that? So there's a little bit of blue Loctite on each one of those. Because I couldn't get replacement nuts. Bring it up snug and torque it down after we get them all snug. Now I'll add the click click sound effect later on so you can hear that torque up. So you can resharpen these blades. Uh, click click, you heard that? Yeah, click click. They're very musical. Oh, I forgot to tell you something. <laughs> As I look at it. My bad. So, when you're working on this thing, you're supposed to... Let's see what we're doing here. Okay, so, look down here. There's a pin that goes down through this. Holds that there. What this is, is actually a grippy long pin. It goes in the other way. And it lines up. With that. There. My bad. I apologize that it was a bad on my part. And that holds everything still. Might make it a little easier on my fingers. Yeah, it does. And again, hold the bolt still, pull on the bolt. Or hold, hold the bolt still, pull on the nut. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, that one's done. Pull up the safety pin, move to the next one. Last one. Pull the bolt, turn the nut. Once you get that done, you can pull the safety pin out. Turn it around and it just stores right on the chipper. Oh, put the keeper on it. Down there. I guess it's on the other side, is the anvil. And it's really not very easy to see. Anyway, there's an anvil in there. <laughs> um, yeah, there's an anvil in there and we got to set it between an eighth of an inch and a sixteenth. Three bolts. Right there on the drum. So that's on the infeed drum. There's another piece feeling. I'll put that right now before I forget. I thought there was another one. Oh. Now, eighth of an inch adjustment in there. That's a bit of a trick, I think. Eighth to the sixteenth, so there's not much room for error in there. Now, I think when I hit this, maybe I should take a look at it and see if I can pull it out and take a look at it. See if I damaged it as well. So 
So it's a lock nut and a washer on these bolts. Oh, there's a piece of wood in there. That's not good. Oh, sugar. Do you think maybe that's why I didn't want to turn? Because it's still pushing against a piece of wood? Hmm? Just maybe? Do you think that might be what it is? We just figured out that we get a tree in there. It's a duck, you silly thing. I'm sure this is not in the manual anywhere. So we're going to jack that up somehow make sure it's not going to bite my fingers and I'm going to probably reach in with those long pliers and then pull that other piece of wood out that's the plan let's see if it works the anvil we can put that right back in slides in there Combinations back or both combinations back. I'm gonna spin this backwards. So basically, what I'm doing. I wish you could see this. Let's see if I can get a better view here in a second. I'm trying to set it up so that it's basically an eighth of an inch. Slide that down. So, this piece here is the anvil. Three bolts that hold in place. This is your adjustment thingy. Take that broken one. My fingers got pinched by it. Anyways, if you look in here. There we go. Okay, so, piece on the bottom is the anvil. That's the blade going by it. And I wonder, zoom like this. It's about two mil, so millimeter, not mil, as in thousands, uh, two millimeters. So that's more than a sixteenth of an inch. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna snug that down and see how that goes. Snug those down. Making sure that the handle doesn't move. Well, folks, that's a little bit of maintenance on the WC46, the Woodland Mills chipper, good unit. I've used industrial units and I've used some gravity ones and stuff. This, uh, this one makes life easy. And you can see many examples of uh, this being used on other channels as well. Uh, My Cluttered Garage with Ed, or Song with Sandy. Uh, they both put theirs through paces. I think both of them have the next size up, but uh, gives you an idea what they can do. I'm impressed with it. Everybody should be like the chickens and support the channel as well. <laughs> well, folks, that is the WC46 Woodland Mills. A little bit of maintenance, changing the blades, setting the anvil, greasing it. Making sure everything's good to go. Next thing we do, chipping time. <laughs> Don't forget the dip. Thanks for coming by, folks. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Leave a comment. Always love to chat. Stay well, stay safe. Till the next time. Bye for now. <laughs>